Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I got the bass tone for my latest song, Ascension. Now I actually learned how to do this from Nolly Get Good Session from Nail the Mix. Um, there's actually a preview of Nolly's session uh, free on YouTube. I'll uh, post a link so you can check that out. And I'm pretty much going through the same thing, but there were a few things he used that I didn't have, and I want to share with you how I got around with that. And basically, everything I'm doing here is completely in Logic Pro. Now, there is one plugin I'm using that is a free download that I think is very good, but if for some reason you can't download it or you just don't want to, um, I do have an alternative uh, method you can use that is completely in Logic Pro. So the first thing is getting a good bass DI. Make sure you have new strings on your bass, that's a must. I recorded this with a Washburn XB100, which I think is actually kind of a cheap bass, but with new strings, it's good enough to get the job done. Okay, so here's what our DI sounds like. You know, plain and boring. <laughs> Um, so the first thing I have on here is a match EQ plugin. Now this was something that Nolly didn't use. I actually bought Nolly's session from Nail the Mix. If you do that, you get all the stems for uh, the periphery song and you get the bass DIs. So this is a plugin that I actually use a lot. It's uh, the match EQ plugin. What it does, it can analyze the uh, EQ curve of a certain sound and then you can apply that EQ curve to your own sound to make it sort of have a similar quality. You drag the sound that you want to analyze and you drag it into this little square here. It'll get a, a EQ curve. Click this button here under current. Play your song um, with the track that you want to apply that EQ curve to on solo. So you would uh, click this and you would play just your bass DI. Once you've played it through, you uh, stop the song, you click this match button here and it will match the EQ curve. Now this is not like a uh, magic plug-in. It's not going to magically fix your tone and make it sound exactly like your reference. Um, but it is kind of a nice tool to kind of clean it up a little bit and get it closer to that sound. And I usually don't apply too much of it. I usually just do a little bit. So you can see here it's only 15% and uh, I've got smoothing set to one. So uh, let's have a listen to what it sounds like. It's pretty subtle, but I feel like it cleans it up just a little bit, kind of carves out some of the roundness and, and makes it sound a bit more, uh, a little bit brighter, a little more bitey. Next, I'm using the bass amp. Um, there are actually some bass amps you can download for free online, but I think this one sounds better than the ones you can download. So uh, if you've got Logic Pro, um, this is a pretty cool plugin right here. So you can just copy my settings for now and then tweak them to your liking, but uh, here's what it sounds like. So now we're getting a more growly, aggressive DI. So next we have an EQ, and this is just me following along with what Nolly did. Um, he felt like his DI needed a little more brightness, so he added a shelf. Um, I got mine going to about 7.5 kHz uh, and raised at about 7.5 dB. So here's what that sounds like. And that just gives a little more air, a little more life to the tone. All right, and then we've got a compressor. Now, the stock compressor in Logic, I feel like really tightens up the low end and sometimes too much. Usually if I'm compressing a lower sound like a bass or a kick drum, I like to use something like a multiband compressor because you can be a little bit more subtle with the low end. The stock compressor, I think, hits the mids first. I'm not really sure, but it always just seems to kind of take whatever you're compressing and, and give it a little more uh, kind of mid, brighter, like aggressiveness which isn't necessarily a bad thing, you just want to be aware of that. Um, and in this case, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make our tone a little bit brighter, a little more aggressive. So here's what that sounds like. So just kind of evening out the playing a little bit. All right, now here's where things get tricky. So you've probably heard before that a lot of people in metal will split off their bass tracks. You get your low end, that sounds really clean, and then your mid to high range, you're gonna distort. Um, and I've done that, but I just never really liked having two bass tracks. It, it was always just like a little too much to keep up with. I'd rather just have one bass track that sounded really good. What Nolly does, he's got a plug-in. It's some kind of Fab Filter Pro, I think is what it's called. And it actually allows you to distort specific frequencies. So he's able to distort only the mid and high range and leave the low range completely clean. But I don't have anything like that, so my way for getting around that was doing this. Instead of making a copy and splitting it off, I decided to use some buses. So what we're gonna do is we're going to send 
our signal to a bus. I'm sending it to bus two. And you're going to call this Gertie. <laughs> uh, I meant to call that grit, but whatever. You're going to send it here. And this is basically a copy. And we're going to distort it here. And then we're going to send the signal back to one bus that controls everything. So we're going to output this to bus one, which will be our base bus. And then our original signal. Right now it's stereo out. We want to change that to bus one as well. Okay, so basically we've got our main signal. And we're just sort of splitting off to distort it. And then we're coming back and meeting at one spot where we can control it all together. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a high pass filter. I'm rolling off at about 290 hertz. Um, we're just getting rid of the low and we're gonna leave that stuff clean. All right, and now we wanna distort it. So I like to use the Guitar Amp Pro. Now here's the thing when it comes to distortion. So if you actually listen to the periphery bass tone, it's really distorted. And a lot of metal bands, usually their bass is very distorted. But what I've found is that for my guitar tone, it actually works better to have just more of a gritty bass tone and not something super distorted, just something kind of clanky and gritty. That's something you'll have to experiment with. You wanna make sure that your bass tone is gonna work with your guitar tones. Now, bass tone is probably more important than guitar tone. So ideally, you would come up with a good bass tone first and then have your guitar tone revolve around that. But for this song, I was using amp sims and amp sims really aren't that great. So I needed to make the best possible tone I could for the guitars with what I was working with and then uh, have the bass work around that. The bass can take a little bit more abuse, so it was better for me to do it that way. So just keep that in mind. As you're doing this stuff, make sure you're checking it in context with the other instruments to make sure it's gonna work. So here you can see I'm actually, I've left everything pretty much at 12 o'clock. And I really just played around with these settings up here. I tried the different speakers first to pick which one I liked best. Um, then I tried some different amps to figure out which one had the right amount of distortion or gain. And then I just picked uh, which EQ curve I felt was most appropriate. Um, so I really didn't touch any of these settings here, but um, here's what it sounds like with the distortion. <laughs> So we got this really clanky, aggressive bass distortion. So that's it for the grit channel. Now we're just gonna send that all to our bass bus right here. So the grit channel and our clean channel are meeting back up. So here's what they sound like together. Now right now the grit channel is a little bit too loud. Um, so we're gonna turn that down so that we get a more even sound. So technically our grit channel is going through a speaker, but it still kind of sounds like a direct signal and our clean DI is still a direct signal. So we need to send it all through a cab. Now here's where I downloaded uh, an extra plugin. What I like is this plugin right here. This is a uh, free one from Ignite Amps. So this is an impulse loader. You'll need some impulses. So you can just look up free bass impulses and uh, see what's out there. I can't remember where I got the one I'm using, but what I like is this orange custom 4x12, and I like to use the uh, M930 uh, with the second setting. There's a first setting, and I like this second one right here. So this one just has a really nice growly character to it. Now, if you can't download any plugins or you just don't want to for some reason, a uh, way you could get around that is by using this plugin that comes with Logic Pro called Amp Designer. Now, the way this works, this plugin here gives you an amp and it gives you a cab. But what you can do is you could actually bypass either the cab or the amp. You could bypass the cab and just use the direct signal if you wanted to use your own cab, or you could bypass the amp and use a cab here. So that's what we're going to do. Um, if you click on amp here and you go down there's transparent preamp this will actually leave your di signal unaffected it looks like there's some controls here so maybe you could apply some eq or effects if you wanted to um, but for the most part you're probably just going to want to leave that alone and then you can just choose from the cabs here now what's interesting is i haven't really messed around with this um, but I did go through it real quick to see if any of these would work. I thought like one of the 4x12s would be good, but I found that this Pawn Shop 1x8 actually sounded pretty good. Um, it's got a lot of low end to it. It might be a tad woofy, but you know, you could work with that. All right, so it's sounding good, but we're getting some pretty weird frequencies. Um, I don't know if you could hear those whistly frequencies. The kind of stuff. So I've got an EQ here. And uh, again, at this point, I, I was just following Nolly along. This is what he did, and it seemed to work for him. But we're rolling off some of the sub frequencies uh, just to clean it up. But we do have a boost here um, at 80. 
Um, we're adding another shelf, adding more high end to it. Um, and then we've got all these little notches here where we're just cutting out um, those whistly frequencies. So uh, you can hear what this is doing. So now we have a bass tone that's a lot easier to listen to. And then the last thing Nolly did, he added one more EQ, but this one is to help the bass sort of stitch together with the guitars. Um, and it's a pretty cool little trick. What the heck? <laughs> so I know it sounds kind of confusing because you want clarity in the mix. You want to be able to hear all the instruments individually, but you want them to feel like they fit together and that they are working together, not against each other. So I'll go ahead and play the guitars with the bass. And uh, if you listen, it, it's pretty cool. You'll hear how it sort of feels like there's a space between them. And then when you turn the EQ on, it just kind of stitches them together. <laughs> And now at this point, um, we have a, a pretty cool sounding bass. So what you can do is you can actually bounce all this down into one file. So what I like to do is have different templates for the different phases of the mix. So everything we just did, I would have done that in the editing phase. And then I would bounce that down into a single file for the mixing phase. So I just opened up a new project. This is the mixing phase. These are all the bounced files. And if you look right here, this is my bass track. So everything that we just did is now in one bass track and we can just take this and focus on getting it to sound good in the mix. We don't have to worry about all our amp settings or what plugins we used before. We can just judge it purely as a, as a single audio file in the mix. But anyway, hopefully that helps you guys figure out how to get a cool sounding bass for your mixes. Until next time.